Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by and welcome to the Whitehaven Coal Interim Results Presentation. At this time, all participants are in the listen-only mode. There will be a presentation followed by a question and answer session, at which time you may submit your questions using the Q&A panel on the bottom right of your screen. Alternatively, if you wish to queue for a question over the telephone, you'll need to press 0 followed by 1 on your telephone keypad. Please also note this conference has been recorded today, Friday the 30th of January 2015. I would now like to hand the conference over to your host today, Mr. Paul Flynn, Managing Director, Kevin Ball, CFO, and Jamie Frankham, EGM Operations. Thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, and thank you very much for taking the time to uh, to listen in to our half-year results for Whitehaven Coal for our financial year 15. Uh, we certainly think that this half year has been another good period for us in terms of delivering on on uh, the targets we've set for ourselves. So. Um, we will take this time, um, and you, you notice we are using a slightly changed format in having a webcast as well as the audio. Uh, we will speak to uh, the presentation that we've released this morning, but also, of course, there's our ASX announcement that's gone out at the same time. But happy to take questions at the end of the period um, on, on either document, obviously. So we'll move straight into um, to our first half achievements. Should be scrolling up on the screens now, so pass the agenda into our first half achievements. Uh, we've had a very good period in terms of our safety performance. So you all recall that uh, for our, our financial year 14, we, we brought a significant uh, reduction into um, into our TRIFA rate in financial year 14, and it's great to see that that momentum has continued into 15. And certainly, all across all our businesses, we've seen a continued reduction of our TRIFA, and and that's very pleasing, obviously, just uh, for ourselves as management and the board. Uh, that our, our efforts in this regard are being um, are being rewarded, but obviously very very uh, pleasing for our staff, obviously who are on the front line, and see that the programs we are implementing are uh, are gaining further traction, and uh, and the results are uh, correspondingly improving. Uh, our sales production, as you know, with our quarterly report that had gone out with production, um, the production has gone very well for this period. Obviously, we had the um, the plan change out for Narrabri that we all knew was coming. Um, but both ROM production, considering that, and also sales have been very good, and a number of records have been set during that time. We'll, we'll go into that a little bit later on. Um, a major milestone, of course, uh, during this period was during December, first ratings out of Malls Creek, and uh, and we'll talk a little bit that in more detail. But clearly, that's that's a, a transformational event for us as a company. Uh, three months ahead of, ahead of schedule is, you know, a sterling achievement by all involved in the project. So. Um, so that is that is a significant milestone, and uh, not only have we been raining coal, but obviously subsequent to year end we've been selling it as well, which has been uh, which has been very pleasing. Uh, the project itself about 87% complete as at 30 of uh, 31st of December, so we're a little bit better than that now. But uh, I'll I'll go through the details of that a little bit more fully in the presentation. Uh, the long wall long wall change out at Narrabri again went very well. Very pleased with that. A little bit ahead of schedule and budget, which was nice to see, and uh, and ramp up has been going well since that time. Obviously, costs have been a focus for us all in the industry, and uh, and and we've obviously reported some significant reductions in our costs in previous uh, halves, and uh, and certainly this half is no uh, no different in that regard. We've certainly again brought momentum into this new year and continued our downward pressure on costs, and uh, and we've been able to ma maintain our cash margins even with you know a further softening coal price environment, um, which has been seeing us stand in good stead to to fund continue to fund our operations in this. A sustainable way. As I said, safety performance for us has been very, very pleasing. Our, our our program of the safe haven rules has gone very, very well. We've talked about how we've complemented that with both our leadership program and as we've rolled that also out to the contractors who work for us. Um, that that's been a significant achievement, and uh, and complemented very much by by the performance at uh, at Malls Creek, which has certainly been in excess of a million a million man hours without uh, an LTI, which has been an outstanding achievement uh, by any measure. We thought we'd throw in a few more slides just uh, following the safety, uh, just to go to the, uh, the International Energy Agency's midterm uh, market report. Um, and I know many of you have these uh, the access to this information as well and do spend some time analysing it, but uh, it's always reassuring just to look at what you know the IEA is saying about global uh, demand for both thermal and metallurgical product. Certainly, they're projecting some significant uh, increases over a relatively short horizon, I have to say, uh, for thermal coal. If we look at the numbers there, at 6.8 billion tonnes in 2012 through to 8 billion tonnes in 2019, <coughs> that's a significant improvement. 
The Seaborne trade, they're saying 895. We, we see that trade probably between about 830 to 840 uh, now, uh, given that that number is back at 12, and, uh, and do see some balance entering the market uh, in the next 12 months uh, in terms of uh, Seaborne supply and demand. Uh, so that is, uh, that is good to see. Met coal we see is actually probably a little bit more uh, pleasing than that, in, I'd have to say, because the the, uh, the scale of the shutdowns that we've seen on the global market probably a little bit more compelling, I would say, proportionally, even though in volume it's a much smaller market, but certainly in volume those shutdowns have been um, more significant as a proportion of the total supply compared to what's occurred in the thermal market. So again, we think this is very good for Australia, we think this is good for us as we increase the proportion of our coal that is sold into this market and as you know uh, we have the natural benefit of being able to produce uh, our high volt PCI and our semi-soft products uh, you know, very cheaply given that uh, our cost of washing is very, very mild and the, the yield losses that we sustain in producing those premium products even at this point in the cycle um, are our most profitable products by some significant margin. So that, uh, that's very good for us and during this period you'll see the split in revenue achieved from our products is improved. Uh, towards the met coal side of things for the half. For our financial highlights, our EBITDA before significance at $52 million. I think that uh, that's probably in line with people's expectations and, uh, and a pretty solid result. As I say, the key to that is maintaining uh, a solid cash margin in our, in our, uh, for each tonne sold during the period. Uh, prices obviously have tracked down, but we've tracked our cost profile down, down with that. Uh, our operating cash flow at $54 million was a solid outcome. The average price per ton, average cost per tonne, sorry, 63, uh, down from 71 from the previous co corresponding period, is, is um, gives you a size or the magnitude of the, the cost reduction we've been able to achieve. We think those savings are continue to be on a sustainable basis, and uh, and we see further cost uh, improvements into the second half as we carry that cost reduction focus on into into the new uh, the new calendar year. Net debt there at 887, and our gearing still relatively modest there at 22% um, even with the amount of uh, capital we've deployed at Malls Creek. Next slide about the first half profitability. Uh, revenue is an interesting dynamic for us and this gives you a very quick um, a very quick assessment as to the difficulties I suppose with uh, with coal prices being soft during this period. We produced somewhat in the order about 800,000 tonnes more than the previous corresponding period but with a you know with no real revenue benefit for it. The previous cor corresponding period, I will note, had some $20 million of coal purchases in there, including that $400 million number. So given that we haven't purchased coal uh, during this period, the like-for-like -like comparison is probably more like 380 for the first half of FY14. Um, and so that, uh, that again, but just evidence, um, extra tonnes coming out, but obviously with a softer price, uh, we're achieving, uh, achieving less of the revenue line for the work that's being done. I won't go into the details of, of that in any in any significant way. Um, I'll say that for, for questions, I'm sure. If we flick over the page in terms of this uh, the cost slide that we've used a number of reporting periods now, you can see where we've been in terms of coal sales on an equity basis for the period 4.7 versus 3.9. Uh, as I say, 800,000 tonnes up on where we were in the previous period uh, for little total revenue uh, effect. Uh, the average revenue at 73 versus 77. Uh, average costs. Uh, at 63 versus 67 for the half two of FY14 and 71 obviously for the previous corresponding period. Uh, our EBITDA margin on coal sales at 14% uh, is pleasing. The unused take or pay which you know we've been recording over time to, just to show you the burden that each sold tonne carries in terms of uh, the long position we have in take or pay obviously being utilised and, uh, and that, that burden is reducing as we continue to soak up the extra capacity. Uh, and our average, average cost obviously excluding that that uh, that impost is $62 for this period. I think those are, those are those are pretty good solid cost outcomes for us as a business. As I say, they are sustainable, and uh, and we think we can certainly continue to pressure our cost base down uh, in the next six months. Capital allocation. Uh, you can we've mapped out some numbers there for you just for our sustaining capex. Um, you can see the mains development. We have put extra dollars into the mains development Narrabri. Uh, our mains, as you know, or our development generally at Narrabri, as you know, has been been very, very successful. The rates at which we've been achieving uh, development drivage there has been fantastic, and the costs have been coming down. We have used that to uh, to get ahead, further ahead in terms of our mains development. So we have put some more money into that in this period, um, but we've pulled that aside and have given you some numbers in terms of sustaining capex for that six-month period there 
at uh, a dollar for our open cuts and a dollar for Narrabri. Moores Creek, as you know, given that we're 87 percent, you would have expected us to devote some more uh, capital to that during this period, which we have done. Uh, so $171 million, that's certainly been uh, a fair investment in in, uh, in getting the project as advanced as it is. But what we've done is, is obviously drawn forward for the benefit of our shareholders, the fact that we are able to draw forward the revenue that we receive from coal sales, even though these are you know, in effect pre-commissioning tonnes that we are selling at the moment. But that's a very good outcome. We did opportunistically pick up a couple of pieces of land during the six months as well um, for the sake of uh, you know, just tidying up our land acquisitions which are uh, around the business. Balance sheet, um, not, a lot to, not a lot to say here. I have to say, uh, I mean, you've got the expected increase in the facility. You've got cash on hand, as, as we mentioned before. Um, we've got our debt, our net debt there at 887, as we mentioned before. And uh, we split out for everyone the ECA because we always get questions about the ECA and finance lease component of the total interest-bearing uh, liabilities that we have. So there it is for you. Uh, as I say, uh, gearing ratio at 22%. Uh, undrawn facilities there at 200. Well and truly enough for us to to complete the balance of our portion of Moores Creek uh, to bring the, the project to completion. Now, in terms of financing, six months ago, uh, when we talked through the, uh, the year-end results, we did uh, highlight to everybody that we're on a pathway here to find a more sustainable uh, funding platform for the business, given that the business is changing so quickly, and our financing needs are therefore changing very quickly as well. Uh, Moores Creek coming online and quicker than everyone thought obviously gives us a, a bump in the, in the underlying creditworthiness of the business. Um, and given that the cash margin of the business has, has done you know, pretty good things during a difficult time in the market, that underlying credit position, as I say, has been improving. We've certainly been preparing ourselves to go uh, to seek new sources of funding, and that, that certainly was uh, a focus for us in terms of last year and looking at the US market in particular. Uh, that focus is still there, but as you all would have seen and you're informed viewers of these markets yourselves, that, um, that the markets in the US have been going through some, some interesting times, and, uh, and we think for ourselves, um, We've created enough flexibility in our, in our facility there with um, a maturity of December 16 uh, that we don't think that um, dipping our toes into a market that's going through uh, the ripples that we saw late last year would be advisable, given that we have time on our hands, given that our creditworthiness is improving every day uh, as Moores continues to, uh, to come forward and ramp up. Um, we'll pursue that through the next six months to, to a conclusion. We are certainly we think we'll take advantage of a lower interest rate environment, which I think is very good for us. Um, but our real driver here is certainly tenor. We'd like to get longer tenor than the domestic facility that we have today allows us. And, uh, and, and a more flexible covenant package, which is reflective of uh, the maturing nature of the underlying business. So certainly within this next six months, we'll be, we'll be buttoning this down in a more, uh, well, in a longer term position that's more reflective of, of the way in which the business is improved. Over the page on coal sales, I won't go through this too much given that we've put these numbers out already in, in our quarterly, uh, other than to say, of course, we've, uh, we've hit a number of targets during the course of the year. It's been, been very, very uh, pleasing that we are hitting records consistently with our business as we continue to grow. Um, I think the pleasing thing for ourselves basically on a sales perspective is that we have been able to manage a sales profile despite the fact that we had you know, a significant uh, uh, ROM production shortfall, if you like, as a result of our planned outage at Narrabri. Uh, so that's been very good. We were able to build stocks before the changeout and maintain a sales profile whilst the, the changeout was in progress. So that has been a very good good result for us. And uh, as I say, I won't go too much further on those given that you've all had those numbers for some time. Uh, malls, we provided a breakdown for you here just in terms of the status of the major packages at Malls Creek and uh, the completion, the progress of completion on each of those major works. Uh, as you know, obviously, with the railings starting on the 9th of December, uh, we've obviously uh, very, very close to completion of that particular component of the work. And, and essentially, the balance of work required here now is, is the erection of the CHPP and the related infrastructure that goes with that. Uh, that being um, our stacking system, as you'll see in some of those later pictures, is actually up and running commission. But the reclaimer system uh, won't be online until till later in this financial year. So. Certainly in the next month they will be uh, starting to be shipped to us and then assembly on site will occur and commissioning you know, towards the end, of, uh, the end of the financial year. 
but we are building stockpiles on our system. We are uh, we are using temporary uh, manual loading into the hopper system to load trains. So you'll all know that we were direct charging trains straight from the ROM hill for those who've been to Malls Creek and see how it works. But now we can actually build stocks and load off our stockpiles, uh, which gives us much greater flexibility on site now. Um, Given that we're getting closer to the end of our journey with, with malls and uh, the project has been running very, very successfully, uh, we all knew 767 uh, was a very, very competitive number in any event and, uh, and our target has been to bring it under, under budget and ahead of schedule. Certainly the ahead of schedule piece, I think we're evidencing that we're doing that. But we thought it was time to probably put a marker down in terms of what we thought we'd, uh, we'd save in the 767. So our estimate today is in the order of about $25 million in terms of that contingency that we'll think we'll keep at the end of uh, the end of the project. There are other things that we are looking at in terms of how we might uh, phase our capex. So, as, as we work out what's the best layout for us operationally, not just on a on you know a a, um, a piece of paper in terms of the graphic design of what the mine might look like, we are looking at optimising the footprint on the site in terms of where we might place certain features of our infrastructure, such as maintenance maintenance sheds, uh, you know, bath houses and uh, offices and so on. So we probably will look at um, optimising that over the next 12 months in terms of where we put the, the permanent structures uh, on the ground. Uh, and so that will probably defer some, some capex as well. But at the end of the day, we're saying about 25 million is our expectation in terms of contingency saved. Um, a few pictures as we move over. As you know, railings have started. There's our, uh, a couple of nice slides there. That's, that's very pleasing to see. We've got about, uh, I think we said 33 to uh, 33, and then closer to 40 trains have now left the site now, which is which is great news. Across there, you can see we're coaling, we're coaling at a rate of knots there already. Both the um, the two primary high quality seams that we've uh, we've been mining very quickly, both the Braemont and the Yonah Vale, certainly lived up to expectations. And, and pleasingly, I think all the assumptions we've made about our gear and the performance of the gear, they've certainly been reinforced by uh, our early operational experience. Um, with uh, with the equipment, so those are those things. Despite being pre-commercial tons, um, the operational um, performance of this new gear is uh, validating the assumptions that we made, which is good for us in terms of um, standing behind the guidance we've given around what we think thermal coal is going to produce and uh, or cost, and also what the Met Coal wants the CHPP is up and running will cost as well. So the slide, as I say, you can see the, um, the stacker there is, uh, it actually doesn't have any coal under it, but certainly now it does have a lot of coal under it. So that's, uh, that's very pleasing. And the largest piece of work, if you like, from an earth moving perspective in terms of cut three, is obviously uh, evidence of our train coming down through there. Now rise, you know, uh, back up and running, which is, which is fabulous. Um, during the six months, we did uh, complete our analysis of the opportunity for top coal caving, uh, and certainly we've pointed to what we to believe to be the, the superior uh, option for us in terms of optimising Narrabri's performance and that is extending the face to a 400 metre wide uh, face and we'll certainly conclude that work uh, over the next few months. Um, the benefits of doing that we believe certainly is an increase in annual, annual productivity and total tonnes per year. We certainly see um, it as a much lower risk uh, option for ourselves operationally but also from a regulatory perspective in terms of approvals and, uh, and there's cost savings at the back of this also for us as well. As you said, the change out went well and we'll be, we think in the next change out we'll be able to shorten that out with uh, some of the duplicate equipment that we put on order. That will give us, uh, we think, probably a week's advantage in, uh, in the next change out as we can pre-install a number of pieces of equipment ahead of actual the physical change out itself being completed. Um, the next slide is really just a graphic to give you um, a bit of background, as you know, where we did experience back in um, April, May of uh, last year. Uh, a conniption in terms of the, um, the, uh, the horizon control software on the long wall. And this is really just a graphic representation. Unfortunately, it's going from right to left rather than left to right as it might normally go, but you'll get the picture. You can see the picture here basically shows you the variations, if you like, in the horizon control on the right-hand side. Once we um, once we've got to a point where we, with the support of uh, the OEMs, we've got to the point where there were some communication issues electronically across the face. Uh, and there were also some software issues which have been resolved. You can now look at what's happened now with the resolution of those issues where we're cutting you know, very, very consistently across the, across the face now. Uh, and you know, when we're operating in full automation mode. So we're not taking it out of, 
out of automation and cutting the, um, the two ends of the long wall face. We're actually running the shear right across the face and cutting consistently uh, and maintaining control of the horizon at all times, which is great. Vickery, as you know, was, we've been approved uh, during the course of the last six months was a great, great step forward for this project. Uh, we are now in the thick of the busy work of, of refining the proposition that is Vickery uh, ahead of you know, some formal, formal engagement around uh, the creation of a joint venture. We certainly, as we said, like to see this done within the next 12 months and that's certainly our target to be able to do that. Um, but I have to say we've got an abundance of riches here uh, with Vickery because the more we, uh, the more we dig and dig in, into our, into our Vickery project in terms of the finalisation of what it is we actually want to joint venture, we do find that there's actually a lot more to it and um, and a lot more upside. So that's that's significant. But that that body of work will continue over the next few months, um, with a view, as I say, to a joint venture in 12 months' time. Uh, as the largest employer in the area, clearly um, our focus has been to make sure that we are completely engaged with the community and our work with the community has gone very well. Obviously Malls Creek has been uh, again transformative in terms of our impact in the community there in which we operate. Uh, so the significance of our, our presence there, you can see just in terms of some of the numbers there, the wages that we pay into the region on an annual basis are quite extraordinary. The recruitment for Malls Creek uh, has been ramping up substantially. Um, the local people in the community um, have been the disproportionate beneficiaries of the training and education that we put into that new workforce. Obviously we did bring some new skilled people into the region but uh, the requirement is that you must come and, and live in the region. There's no fly in fly out uh, for Malls Creek. That's not a sustainable uh, position for us in our view. We did uh, very early um, set ourselves a voluntary target of 10% uh, of the Malls Creek workforce given that as a greenfield site uh, would be Indigenous and, uh, and certainly we're well and truly uh, achieving that. I think our, our percentage is actually nearer 16%. Um, as we sit here today, uh, a fantastic achievement and I've got to say these new employees at our site are really you know, a breath of fresh air in terms of um, you know, their enthusiasm, their drive, the way in which they've taken them to the training and, and, and operationally their performance since they've been on the ground. So 10% uh, was a nice target to set for ourselves but we're well ahead of that and uh, I really probably just see that as a flaw and more as anything else to the extent that more good people turn up and want to jump in and, and contribute then, uh, then we're more than happy to to take them on if they're the right type of people for us. So that's been very, very positive. Our investment proposition, as you know, uh, over the, over the um, if you like, the development of Narrabri doubled our size in terms of output. Malls Creek is doing that again. Um, again, it was easy to talk about that before as an aspiration, but it is real now. Those orange, that orange bar is actually coming out of the ground now. And so um, having started a little bit earlier, than what we said that we we're going to in any event, that'll actually accelerate the size of that orange bar and our 15 has actually got slightly bigger as a result. And then Vickery sits behind that clearly as being another growth option for us then after. Our focus for 15, no surprise, I mean we're obviously going to continue to drive our safety performance. We think it needs to be better and, and, and we're certainly confident we can achieve more. Malls Creek uh, with its ramp up phase now, we've got additional equipment coming on uh, well, in fact next month and uh, that will continue to ramp up as we uh, continue to produce more from the site. We've still got the balance of construction to go, as I said, the CHPP and the reclaiming uh, system also you know, need to obviously be bedded down. Uh, we're certainly looking to do that well within the next six months and uh, so we would say commissioning is more than likely 1st of July if you, if you want to talk about commercial production from the site. That's probably that, the new financial year and, uh, and that certainly will be coupled with our ability to deliver meaningful uh, meaningful met coal and PCI tons into the market would be the signal for that uh, for you that um, the infrastructure is there at a commercial stage uh, at, at or around 30 June I think is probably the easiest way to say. The build up in staff will continue. I think we're around about the 170 mark now, uh, again a little bit in advance of what we've reported for December but that will continue to advance and we are finding that we are able to get quality people both out of the, as I say, the surrounding environment but also where we need to bring experienced people who are going to come in and, uh, and reside in the community. We'll continue that great work with the Aboriginal communities in the area. I think our production portfolio, we've obviously got to continue to drive performance across all of that. We've got a lot to do to bring home a very good uh, and, and still big second half. Um, Narrabri, obviously there's plenty of options there for optimising. As I said, we're going to refine and, and bed down a few of those options, a 400 metre face. Certainly within the next six months we'll, we'll certainly do the necessary work to sign that off uh, during this period. And importantly, implementing our, our longer term financing plan for the company, uh, certainly by 30 June. I think there's no, 
no um, no doubt that that's something that's front of mind for a lot of our investors and uh, and potential investors and certainly uh, we're working very we're very closely with our advisors and banks to make sure that that's concluded in a timely and orderly fashion. So thank you for your time. Uh, we'll open the floor up to to questions. And as a reminder to our telephone audience, if you do wish to ask a question over the phone, you need to press zero followed by one and wait for your name to be announced. And your first question from the phone lines will come from Sarah Jane Kaska from The Australian. Please go ahead. Oh, hi guys. Um, I'm understand a lot of stuff you said about the, the medium to long term outlook for the um, the price of coal and, and demand etc. But obviously in the short term, you know, we are seeing a bit of pain there in the price. Just wondering what your thoughts are on this year, like 2015, as far as the price goes and whether you expect it to track higher or, or stay where it is or do you expect it to come under further pressure this year? Uh, thanks, Sarah J. Look, I'll, I'm happy to answer this as briefly as I can right now. I mean, this is an investor call uh, mostly, so I'm happy to take a call from you after, after um, you know, this session, just so I can fill this out a little bit more. But I mean, basically, if I look at it today, we we do see the thermal coal market continuing to be, you know, soft as as everybody's noted. But as I said before, we actually don't think it's far away from physical balance if you look at the global supply and demand. So uh, that does point to not massive improvements in the short term, but measured measured for improvements that we would say over the next ten, uh, 12 months. Uh, Met coal, we are actually a little bit more bullish on that. We do actually do see that tightening up a little quicker. And so I think that is that is positive for us. Of course, the currency being in the place that it is today means that our $8 equivalent price for coal, you know, is actually improving. And so whilst it's easy to talk about the Dow nature of, you know, the US dollar coal price, um, with our currency probably you know, belatedly reflecting where I think the underlying nature of, you know, the country's economy dictates that it should be, um, you know, we are seeing a, an improvement in our $8 dollars coal price. And so that, that's actually very positive for us and the industry more generally. Thank you. Your next question from the phones will come from Paul Young from Deutsche Bank. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, gentlemen questions on uh, CapEx and OpEx. Firstly, just on CapEx, I know you've, you've stated that your capital investment was about $200 million for the half. You know, I look at your cash CapEx and your cash flow statement, it was about 275 Can you, can you just explain the difference there and also guide us to what you expect the um, accounting CapEx and cash CapEx to be in the second half? Uh, and then on uh, operating costs, Paul. I mean, speak up a bit, really Paul. Sorry, results. sorry, mate. You're a little bit you're a little bit muted. Can you speak up a little bit more? We turned our volume up on this end as much as we can. Yeah, sure. Let me uh, just try again there. Yep. Uh, can you hear me a bit better now? Yep. Yep. Thank you. Okay. I'll just repeat that. Did, did you get that first question? Yep. We got that. Thank you. Okay. Right. Okay. Great. Second question, just on uh, Paul on the operating costs. Um, clearly a, a, a pretty good result, certainly at the mine sites. Um, you haven't mentioned or reiterated, I guess, your, your unit cost guidance at Malls Creek and Narrabri, which I think was 62 to 64 for Malls and uh, uh, 58 to, uh, I think, to 62 for, 59 to 62 for Narrabri. Can you just give us an indication of uh, your view of that, if that guidance still holds? Thanks. Yeah, well, I'll deal with the back end of those questions first, and Kevin will jump in for the CapEx piece. But, um, uh, yeah, look, our guidance still holds on both those. Proportionately, obviously, Narrabri bears a bigger impact on the business given the, the tonnes uh, that, that we expect to come out in this next uh, five months. Um, we, our guidance remains the same in terms of the total tonnes for Narrabri, but I can tell you that we're, um, we're well past the halfway point in terms of our budget uh, this year. So with, a, with five months to go and no change out in sight, um, you know, I think that's a pretty solid period that we'll, uh, we'll churn through and, and deliver on those tonnes. Uh, the Malls Creek um, guidance that, you've, that we've given before, like I say, certainly everything that we've seen with the equipment that we've got on, in the pit at the moment is validating all those efficiency assumptions, the fuel consumption assumptions and so on. So that's actually quite positive for us. So we're, we're, we're happy to stand behind those numbers, um, you know, given that we are in a pre-commercial phase. But like I say, we feel confident about it given the experience that we've seen to date. So that's, that's reassuring. But if you look at where we've ended up in terms of $63, um, you know, for the first six months, um, we think we can squeeze the, you know, the lemon a little bit further. 
And uh, you know, overall, without attributing it to one side or another, overall we reckon there's probably one to two dollars that we can we can squeeze in the second six months. Um, we will see the benefit of, of fuel, obviously, as everybody would note. Um, you know, that we're a big consumer of ourselves, but then again, you know, trains, say for instance, they're big consumers of fuel as well as you'll you'll note as well. So that will spill through the business as the benefit of that is realised, uh, which is good. But we've got other, you know, the, the very the very important um, transition that you know we've made in terms of using 30 tonne axle load trains is now right across our business and, uh, and that itself will, will certainly deliver an improvement in terms of the cost per tonne of uh, coal down at the port. So uh, we feel confident saying that you know, in another, another dollar to two dollars in the second six months it'd be a realistic target for ourselves given that we've already won a hell of a lot of ground in terms of bringing our costs down already. Yep, and uh, to talk about the capital. On the cash flow statement, the cash flow turns out around $270 million in um, yep. uh, mine development plant and equipment, whereas the capital allocation set out on slide 11 comes in at about 201. And Paul, the difference in those is obviously slide 11 is accounting versus the cash flow and the cash flow statement, and those differences come around from the way in which we put uh, on, that alloc on that statement on slide 11, there's just a number of differences between um, the deferred development costs at Narrabri, how they come in and out of uh, come in and out of the, the cash flow statement versus the balance sheet versus this capital allocation statement. A little bit of OBIA, and then there's some. Uh, as you would imagine, in the middle of the year, we were going hell for leather at Balls Creek, and some of those creditors would have unwound in the second half as we paid them out as we came through. So really, they are the, the three main gaps or the three main differences between those things. Yep. Thanks, Kevin. And and the second half. Uh, what do you expect for CAPEX, both accounting and cash? CAPEX, roughly? Um, well, I think the accounting CAPEX for malls will be lower because we've, we've still got those creditor balances, they'll unwind. I think the number that we've got left to go at Malls Creek, our share in total is around $120 million, but that will be spent over 15, 16 sort of numbers, as Paul referred to to begin with. Um, so we look at that and say we're pretty comfortable with that number going forward. Hmm. So, so it's just and the, the balance of the capex and the rest of the business is, as you would imagine, is being kept under tight control and minimal. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No, that, that's useful. I, I can do the calculation there. Thanks, guys. Take another one. Your next question will come to the line of Paul McTaggart from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Hi, gentlemen. Look, just kind of a follow-up on capex. So. You've got this uh, new equipment that you've ordered, which will get you to 8.5 million tonne of Malls Creek. So the funding of that, is that just coming through in operating leases? Is that how that plant's being funded? So it's separate yeah, and yeah. distinct from Malls Creek? Yeah, that's it, Paul. Yep, exactly the same. Okay, thank you. Now you... And your next question from the phone lines will come from Lynn Lawcock from UBS. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, gents. I just wanted to clarify a little bit more just the, the delta and the capex. You talked a little bit about deferred development costs. I understand that talking to Ian this morning, some of it's to do with gate road development. Is that that's not being expensed through the P&L? It's just simply being put onto the balance sheet. What is that amount going forward? Because you know, there seems to be quite a bit more cash went out the door than we all thought. So I'm just wondering, what is the extra spend at Moores Creek that's not being captured in the, the CAPEX and the slides and being captured in the OPEX? Thanks. And is that yeah, going to continue through life of mine? Hold on. I don't think there's any, there's any uh, CAPEX that's not coming through those those forms. I mean, clearly the um, we have invested more in, in terms of the mains at uh, Narrow Road, but that was part of our plan that would do that. I mean, the main development is, continues on, Glenn, as you know, until about 2019-2020, um, uh, when, when the main developments, you know, essentially concluded. And, and they are, as you know, life of mine assets, so we spend that money, we defer it and amortise it over the tonnes that, uh, that come out over the life of mine. Um, malls itself, uh, as I mentioned just earlier, in, in, uh, as we're going through the slides, uh, we think there's about 25, you can back solve your numbers into this, about 25 we think of the contingency we won't spend. Um, in terms of the balance, if you put that aside for the moment, the balance, as Kevin said, is about $120 million our share uh, that remains to be spent. 
Um, we think that of that 120, there's about 20 million dollars, as, as I alluded to earlier in my discussion, that we're not going to spend that money in the short term, given that, as we say, we are actually refining the footprint of of what the mine looks like in t before we actually put permanent infrastructure down on site for those important things like um, you know maintenance sheds and office facilities and so on. And so, we're, once we actually run the mine a little bit harder, we'll um, we will refine exactly where we think we want to put that structure, and uh, so so what we are going to do is uh, uh, for the next 12 months, say for instance, um, you know we'll 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 not have necessarily the sort of infrastructure you see at Narrabri for those sorts of things. It'll be more like um, Werris Creek, as in terms of flavour for you, and so so that will be staggered over a period. So that leaves you about 100 100 spent on the core project, our share. Yeah, OK. Sorry, Paul. I, that I understand. I guess I was just trying... In the mains development, it's not going through your cash cost guidance of low 60s for Narrabri. It's not no. in your slide of CapEx. So I'm just trying to work out what is this additional cost in the slide or money out the door every year till 2020? It is, in, it is in the slide of CapEx on the second line there, Glenn. The, um, if you remember, we had a long wall change in November. And so what you should think about with the gates is that it's pretty much in balance. And what we amortise and what we spend is about the same over any particular year. It just depends on the timing when those long wall moves pop up. So okay, so there's no so the delta between the the, the two hundred and the two seventy is nothing to do with narrow price spend that we're not seeing. The, the, no, no, no. Okay, all right. Thanks. I'll, I'll have a chat to Ian because it was just something different to what we spoke about earlier this morning. Understand. Thanks. Oh. And your next question will come from the line of Brendan Fitzpatrick. Please go ahead. Thanks. It's a question on the realised price for the thermal coal product. Notice it's been improving on the last couple of quarters sequentially. Could we confirm whether there's improved quality of product coming through or whether there's uh, some legacy contracts at a higher price which give us a better realised price against the, the spot price we see in the marketplace? Um, Brendan, well, look, um, there's, a, there's a number of different variables there. I mean, there is a small element of our business, and I'll, and I'll call it about 25%, uh, maybe a little bit more, late 20s. Um, there is the benefit of, of uh, contracts which were signed six to 12 months ago that spill into this year, and, and those essentially for the premium products, firstly, uh, the Met Coal, uh, less so, but certainly the PCI, sold 12 months in advance comes off a better price, um, and even the uh, and even tons any tons sold in the Korea are, are certainly agreed 12 months in advance, and uh, and they are fixed at a price, and they spill into this period, uh, spill into any period. When that's good, when the price is going down, it's bad when the price is going up. Um, so there's certainly that quality-wise. Um, I don't think the quality of the, the the coal that we've sold is is markedly different from one period to another. Certainly, the proportion of revenue that we've, we've received uh, for Met Coal versus Thermal has improved. Uh, so that's that's been certainly a focus for us because we know, as I said, given the given the low yield losses that we suffer, we're minded to produce every ton of you know PCI or semi soft we can because it it is quite profitable for us to do that as opposed to some of the other mines, say for instance the Hunter Valley, where their yield losses are you know say three times our size, and and they're sort of retreating from that market because it's unprofitable for them given those yield losses. So that that's probably the mix. Uh, in terms of where we go, um, for the second, the second half, we see a consistent sort of uh, result from where we are today. Um, again, the key to all of this is, is you know, if we see um, improvements in, in coal prices, that spills nicely onto the bottom. We obviously want to make sure that the currency stays where it is. But, um, but we have been seeing generally, and more in the short term, or in the more recent months rather than the previous months earlier in the year. Um, you know, reasonable, reasonable premiums for our product quality coal being achieved uh, in our sales. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. And just a follow-up question, Malls Creek, the railings and the, the shipping that's picking up so far, all the, the coal quality and specs there, nothing untoward, everything to expectations? Well, better, better than expected, I'd say, Brendan, actually. So, um, you know, certainly what we've seen in mind to date um, has been in very very good quality, uh, so 
uh, to some degree we've been muddying it up a little bit to um, to meet the specs but um, that's on the positive side obviously not the negative okay we'll watch to see if that's maintained thanks very much and at this time there appears to be no further questions from the phone Nothing further, David? Uh, no, there are no further questions from the phones at this time. All right, well, we might, uh, we might end the call here. Thank you very much, everybody, for taking the time to listen in, and, uh, and obviously you know where to find us, so if there are any further questions, I know we're seeing a number of you during the course of today and the next few days with uh, investor meetings, but thank you very much. But if you've got any follow-up questions, please, uh, please just give us a call. Thank you.